Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's another day's journey and we are glad about it. We just want to thank God for his grace and his mercy. We want to thank him for his goodness. We want to thank him today for his kindness. We thank him for looking out for us and protecting us and watching over us and keeping us. We thank him for his love and his embracing of us. Even when we're not deserving of his generosity, he still cares for us. He still love, loves us. So welcome to Rhythm of Life. Where where we walk to the beat and the rhythm of God, where we seek opportunities to worship him and to praise him in spirit and in truth, where we seek and pursue God, where we learn and learn and learn to uh, walk with him and to pray to him and to live more like him each and every day. So I want to welcome you here this morning, the Rhythm of Life. We're on Sunday, August 18th. And our sermon title was Sacrifices That Please God. And last week we talked about owning your identity in Christ Jesus. And now we want to talk about the sacrifices when we own our identity in Christ Jesus. We are in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 this morning, verses 15, 16, and 17. If you have your Bibles, I would appreciate you opening those Bibles. Technology is great, but it can be a distraction just when you need to hear from God. Someone will send a text or a news a flash will come across your screen or a sale opportunity. Something will be sent to distract you. But if that's all you got, that's all you got. We're going to use what we got this morning. But I like to use my Bible. And so we're in scripture, Hebrews 13, chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. Our sermon title is Sacrifices That Please God. Our support material, of course, is the Bible, the Word of God. We can't do anything without the Word of God. Our support material is coming from Spark Sermon Research, AI, the Internet, and me as I try to put all that information that God has sent my way and allowed me to come across to put it together where I can personalize it, where when I share it with you, I'm also talking to myself. I've also already been convicted or revived or restored or renewed from studying his word. Amen. So again, good morning, church. I'd like to start this morning with a quote from last week's message, uh, owning your identity. And it's coming from theologian J.I. Packer. He wrote this. He said, once you become aware that the main business that you are here for is to know God. Most of life's problems will fall into place on their own accord. We won't have to do that much. Most of life's problems will fall into place on their own accord. I really like this quote from J.I. Packer because the words are true. And we are not on this earth just to exist. We are not here just to satisfy ourselves with the pleasures of this world. We are here to learn who God is. We are here to build and grow a relationship with God. We are here to praise and worship God. We are here to offer our allegiance to God. And we are here to be transformed from worldliness into holiness. Somebody should say amen. If you won't, I will. Amen. So let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verses 15 through 17. Go with me church. And the word of God says this. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God proclaiming our allegiance to his name. Verse 16, and don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. Sometimes we do forget about that, right? He goes on to say, these are the sacrifices that please God. Verse 17, obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls and they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow, for that would certainly not be for your benefit if you did otherwise. So let's just get into this word. First of all, I want to look at three um, sacrifices or three pillars, if you will, in this passage that we'll try to focus on. The pillars of praise, worship as a willful offering, and the allegiance of sacrifice, which means giving our absolute best in honor of God. 
And so the verses in our Hebrews passage of scripture remind us of the importance and the value of praise, worship, and allegiance. Praise is not just something we do when we gather for worship, it's a lifestyle. Praise is a constant, ongoing act of acknowledging God's greatness and acknowledging God's goodness. Praise is a sacrifice that we offer to God, not out of obligation, but out of love and reverence and thanksgiving to him for all that he's done for us. In Psalm 22, 3, it says God is holy and he inhabits the praises of his people. That means God is holy, he's righteous, he's all-knowing, he's sovereign, and he receives our sacrifice of praise. In her book, Extravagant Worship, Darlene Check wrote this. She said, it's amazing to think that God, in all of his fullness, inhabits and dwells in our praises to him. Our praise is irresistible to God. And as soon as he hears us calling his name, he is ready to answer us. That is God that is the God that we serve, church. He's ready. He hears our prayers. He hears our prayers. And he is ready, willing, and able to answer us and respond to us when we worship him and praise him with a sincere heart. Every time we begin to praise God, his presence comes to us like a mighty rushing flood. Even though we live in his presence, when we praise him, he miraculously lavishes, lavishes us with his love. He pours his love out upon us lavishly. Deliverance and healing come forth when we praise him. Questions are answered and things get turned around when we praise him. And they turn around in our favor when we praise him. My praise demonstrates my reliance upon God. My personal praise demonstrating my reliance through praise brings God glory. I rely on him for everything I need. And I want you to invite you right now to just come, 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 come and magnify the Lord with me. Come and lift up his holy name with me this morning. Come and let us exalt God's name together, you and me together. Let us declare his majesty. Genuine praises, church, sends the message to God. I want to say it again. Genuine uh, uh, praises to God sends the message that he is welcome. Welcome in our space. Welcome in our hearts. Welcome in our environment. Just welcome. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in. Genuine praise causes God to act on our behalf. If we were to look at Acts 16, 25 and 26, which we are, we find that prison doors were sprung open. Genuine praise has the power to move God to act, especially in difficult circumstances and difficult situations. My Bible says that Paul and Silas had been placed in prison uh, for teaching the gospel. But at midnight, the Bible says Paul and Silas began to do what? They began to pray and sing hymn songs to God. And my Bible says all of the prisoners in the prison heard them singing and praying. And suddenly, the Bible says, suddenly there was a great earthquake. And it was so great that the foundations of the prison were shaken, shaken loose. And immediately... Immediately, all the doors were open and every chain on every prisoner was loosed. That's the word of God. And so I heard the songwriter when I read this say, there is power in the name of Jesus. When we begin calling on the name of Jesus and when we are in full on praise, he will come to us and chains will be broken. The bond of drugs will be broken. Alcohol, sex addiction bonds will be broken. Lying tongues will be broken. Cheating, stealing, adultery, laziness, prideful, arrogance, sickness, and disease all chains will be broken when we begin to praise God and worship him in a genuine heart condition. 
God will break the chain. He will unlock the prison doors and he will set the captives free just like he did for Paul and Silas. Just call on the name of Jesus. If he did it for Paul and Silas, he'll do it for you. Lord, do it for me. Do it for me right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm calling on the name of Jesus this morning. I got a situation and I'm calling on the name of Jesus. I'm not joyful this morning, so I'm calling on the name of Jesus. I don't feel like praising God this morning, so I'm calling on the name of Jesus. I want him to break that chain that has me bound so that I can praise him in spirit and truth. Praise him like a crazy person. And then going to number two, if praise will invoke all of this, all of this that we just shared, what would worship as a willful offering do? What would worship do combined with our praise? Well, let's find out. Looking at worship as a willful offering, we find ourselves referring to the words of Hebrews 13, 15, and the verse reads, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. This verse is a direct call to the believer to willingly, willingly, we have to willingly offer up our worship to God. Are you willing to worship God? Are you willing to praise God in spirit and truth? Are you willing? That's the question. You want to break free from your prison cell? Are you willing to worship God? So in this context of Hebrews 13, 15, the term sacrifice is carrying a lot of weight here. It implies giving up something of value. It implies that we have to let go and let God. And if we looked in the Old Testament this morning, sacrifices were a significant part of the Israelites' worship. You know that. I know that. They offered up animals. They offered up grains. And they offered up other things of value to show their devotion to God. But we're in the New Testament here, and here the writer of Hebrews, he's not talking about physical sacrifices. No, 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 church. He, he's talking about the sacrifice of worship that comes from a heart that loves God. The sacrifice of praise is the fruit of our lips, and worship is the fruit of our heart. Worship is about love and dedication and appreciation. Praise is about an outward communication from our actions. Worship, I'm going to say it again, is about love and appreciation and dedication. And praise is about an outward communication from your and my actions. Worship means respectful devotion. Loving, honoring, and obeying God who deserves our highest sacrifice of praise. And we want to be able to deliver sacrifices that do what? Please Father God. That's the whole purpose for living down here is to please Father God. So we want to honor him and, and love him and obey him because he deserves our praise, our highest praise, and our highest sacrifice. Worshiping God means acknowledging and celebrating his power and his perfection with a grateful and thankful heart. When we worship, we express our awe of God's kingship and his holiness. We remember how great he is, and so we behave reverently in his presence. And his presence is always with us, so that means we're always behaving reverently day in and day out, at least working at it anyway. Worship is not about an emotion, church. It's about a believer's ability to recognize God and not being ashamed to do so in front of other people. And not being fearful to do it in private. Worship, worship, worship. Some worship silver and gold and all things worldly. And others know and, and understand that God sent his son Jesus to save his people from the wickedness of this world. And Jesus did just that. So what do we do? We praise. What do we do? We worship. What do we do? We honor and we adore him for a great and marvelous act of love that he performed at the cross. In Hebrews 
Hebrews 13, 16, we see a continuation of the worship theme as a willful offering. This verse reads, and don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. Sometimes we forget to do good. Sometimes we get caught up in ourselves and we don't want to do good. But God is calling us to do good and to share with those in need. He didn't say to pick and choose. He said do good and share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. Worship is a willful offering, church. Our worship is not just about our words, but also about our actions. Our actions and our words have to line up with each other. And if you're saying one thing and doing the opposite of what you say, then you're not in worship. You're not in true worship. You're just going through the motions trying to have people think that you are a worshiper, but really in your heart you are not, and your actions will reveal who you really are. It will reveal, they will reveal your heart. So do not forget the word says to do good and to share with others. And what I look at when I, I see this and I read this, do good and share with others, I see that as another call to action. God is calling his people to action. This is the day and the season that we need to take spiritual action. We doing good and sharing with others is a sacrifice that pleases who? Father God. And I know you want to please him. I know you want to give him your all in all. But sometimes our flesh gets in the way. But God wants to deliver you from your flesh this morning. And so this is not just giving money or material possessions when we do good and share. It's about giving of ourselves. Don't be so selfish. Sometimes we have to give our time away. Somebody needs it. Somebody needs prayer. Somebody needs encouragement. But I got a meeting to go. Sometimes we have to give of ourselves. The meeting will have to wait. We have to give our time, our talent, our treasure, our energy, and we have to give our love. And God didn't say give it to whom you like. He said give it to others. Others means other people, everybody. We should be givers just like God. Just like God. Just like God. And so this is a form of sacrificial worship when we're giving of ourselves. And guess what? This pleases God. It is a way of offering up ourselves to God when we serve and we give and to others and when we do good. We're offering up ourselves to God. He's pleased with that kind of service. Sacrifices. That please God. That's what we're talking about this morning. God is pleased when we offer up our praises, when we offer up our good deeds, and when we offer up ourselves. These are the sacrifices that God desires from us. These are the sacrifices that he left his word for us to hear and read over and over again till we burn it in our brain, burn it in our heart, and it becomes a part of our character. These are the offerings that he finds pleasing. So the question is, are you pleasing God? Is your sacrifice pleasing to God or are you getting the glory or is someone else getting the glory? And so I try to throw in a little Greek word every now and then, not that I'm a Greek scholar because I'm not, but the Greek word for sacrifice in these verses is thusia. And this term is used in several passages throughout the New Testament, including Romans 12, 1, where Paul urges believers. We talked about this scripture last week in owning your identity. Paul urges believers to offer their bodies as a living sacrifice, the kind that God will find what? Acceptable. And in Ephesians 5, 2, Paul tells us to live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us. And he offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. In each of these in instances in Romans 12, 1 and Ephesians 5, 2, in each of these instances, the term thusia is used to denote an offering that is given willingly. How willing are you to serve God when you have to sacrifice yourself to do it? Will you serve him willingly out of love and reverence for who he is and what
what his son did for your life and your family's life. In Hebrews 13, 17, it says, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account to God. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden to them, for that would be of no benefit to you or me. Verse 17 here is reminding us that our praise and our worship is not just about relationship with God, but it's about our relationship with other people. Open up your eyes and hear. You can't hear with your eyes right, so you have to open up your ears and hear God's word speaking to you. Open up your eyes and see what God is saying. So this phrase, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority is a call to respect and to what? Honor, honor your leaders in the body of Christ. Those who have been placed in positions of spiritual leadership, honor them, respect them. This is a form of worship, the Bible says, a way of showing our reverence, our respect, our honor for God by respecting those he has appointed to lead us. How many times do we want to crush our leader's head? How many times do we stab them in the back? How many times do we talk about them? I don't like what he said here. I don't like what he did there. I don't like the way she prayed. I, it's not about us. It's about God and how we serve him by the way we serve his people. We got some work to do. And don't deny it. Don't lie to yourself. We've got some work to do. And so the phrase, because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account, is a reminder of the responsibility that leaders carry. Because they keep watch over you as those who give an account. We have to give an account to God for how we led his people, how we treated his people, how we nurtured his people. Leaders have to give an account. Nobody gets a free ride. Nobody gets a free ticket. It's God's way or no way. Leaders are accountable to God for the way they lead, for the way they care for the people. It reminds us that our leaders are not just authority figures, but they are shepherds, shepherds who watch over us and guide us in, in, on this spiritual journey. Church leaders are to help people grow. Grow up in Christ and, and mature in Christ. You can't stay a child on, on, on milk all the time. You got to grow up and you got to get this word and you got to digest it and you got to allow it to transform your mind and renew you. And so when the followers are cooperative with their leaders, they ease the burden that the leaders carry. Did you know that burdens, that burdens are always on the shoulders of a leader, that we're always carrying burdens, that we're always praying and worrying, that our phone is ringing for prayers, that our phone are ringing for light bill payments, our phone is ringing for the needs of the people? Do you know that your leaders carry a burden? And are you supporting your leader? Are you a part of the problem? Are you a part of the burden? And so we ask ourselves, am I sacrificing in obedience to the point my leaders, as the word has said, can joyfully speak of me at any given time? Can my leaders speak well of me at any given time? Can my leaders say I'm faithful? Can my leaders say I'm supportive? Can my leaders say I'm a prayer warrior? Can my leaders say I can count on her? I can depend on him. What? shall they say about you? We're talking about sacrifices that please God this morning. And so these are sacrifices that please God every single day, all day, 365 days of the year. This is the kind of sacrificial worship that God desires, the kind of sacrificial worship that he alone finds what? Pleasing. Pleasing. I, I live to please God. I, I, I don't mind saying I was wrong. I don't mind saying, God, forgive me. I don't mind confessing my sins because I want to live to please God. I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Job well done. Come on up a little bit higher. So our final point this morning on this sermon today is allegiance. Allegiance at our absolute best. 
Ephesians is about understanding what really pleases God. It's about recognizing that our ultimate allegiance, our ultimate uh, loyalty should be to God and God alone, not to man, not to woman, not to the boss, not to other people, not to other things, not to this world, but our allegiance is to God. It's about realizing that our greatest act of worship is to live a life that is pleasing to the Father. So the first aspect of this is to understand that allegiance to God is not about following a set of rules. It's not about following rules and regulations. It's about having a relationship with God. How tight is your relationship with God? How close is God to you and you to God? That's what it's about. It's about having that closeness with God. It's about knowing him and loving him and living in a way that reflects his love, his grace, his mercy, and his peace. These are the sacrifices that please God. Not our religious rit rituals or our good deeds or our, our good acts, our love for him and our desire to live for him. This is what honors God and this is what will please God. So in his book, Knowing God, J.I. Packer, theologian, writes this. He says, what makes life worthwhile is having a big enough objective. Something which catches our imagination and lays hold of our allegiance. This is what allegiance to God is all about. It's about having a big enough objective, the objective of knowing God, loving him and living for him. It's about letting this objective of honoring him no matter what catch our imagination and lay hold of our allegiance. We have to be sold out to God. We have to be determined, convinced, intentional, deliberate in how we worship him and how we praise him. Our allegiance is our commitment and dedication to serve him in what? Spirit and in truth. Truth is just as important as the spirit. Spirit is just as important as truth. And so if we want God to be pleased with our sacrifices, we must first realize that God himself is spirit. And therefore, he is not tied to one location of worship. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all at the same time. He's here with me and he's there with you. God is everywhere. Secondly, we must worship God according to the truth of Jesus' person and work. For he is what? The truth. John 1, 14 and 14, 6 will confirm that. Therefore, church... The only way, the only way we may truly, truly worship God is in spirit and in truth. You have to have the spirit of God. You have to be determined to live holy and righteous and truthful. The only way to worship God is in spirit and truth. He is the spirit and he is the truth. And that's why we, that's the only way we can worship him. There is no other way. You cannot rewrite the Bible. We cannot rewrite the script. It's already been finished as we talked about last Sunday, Sunday and Jesus hung on the cross and when he got to the very end of completing his assignment he said it is finished it's all been laid out now it's up to us to read it understand it copy it follow it digest it take it on take it on church so in our allegiance to God we do not have to be perfect we keep saying, when I get better, when I get some clothes, I'll go to church. When I get my life right, I'll go to church. You need to God. You need God right now, not later, but right now. We don't have to be perfect to serve God, but we do have to be what? Faithful. Faithful. Allegiance is about striving to live in a way that is pleasing to God. Even when we fall short and make no mistake, we will fall short sometimes. Serving in allegiance means we must acknowledge our failures. Don't be so high and mighty and proud. Don't think so much of yourself that you forget you're human too. We must acknowledge our failures. You have to admit you failed. You have to admit you made a mistake. You have to admit that you hurt somebody. You have to admit and you have to say, I'm sorry, not sorry, but I'm sorry. 
It means we must seek God's forgiveness and we must always strive to live in a way that honors him. And being able to acknowledge our failures is another way to honor him. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. So when you mess up, own up. Amen? Amen. Not our perfection, but our persistence and determination to live in a way that honors God will please God because it's a sacrifice. We're always battling between the flesh and the spirit, and we have to choose in every single moment which one we will serve, which one we will represent. So church, let's strive to live in a way that pleases God. Church, let's strive to live with allegiance to him, to know him, to love him, to, to honor him, and, and to serve him in spirit and truth. Let's strive, strive to live with allegiance by doing our absolute best, more so than not. Strive to live in a way that reflects, reflects God's love and his grace and his mercy and his peace and his joy. Strive for it. Strive to live in spiritual honor. God wants our lives to be full of repentance, full of gratitude, full of love, full of obedience, full of submission and full of devotion. God is calling you this morning as he's calling me. He's calling the nation as he's calling us. Be conformed to me and not to this world. Sacrifice because it will please me. And when you please me, when you show me that your heart is turned toward me, then the heavens will open and the blessings will flow. But God is not going to bless us in our mess. We've got to get it right with him. So God is saying a spiritual sacrifice I will honor. He's saying a spiritual sacrifice I will honor. A sacrifice of good works and fellowship I will honor. A living sacrifice I will honor. A sacrifice of faith I will honor. A sacrifice of giving I will honor. Let's talk about giving. Many of you partake of everything your church has to give and you donate nothing financially. You don't even donate your time but God is calling you to a higher standard he called you to tithe he called you to give he called you to give your time your talent and your treasure and your heart wake up church wake up God wants to us to sacrifice in our giving sacrifice of thanksgiving and a sacrifice of love it takes determination and it's a sacrifice sometimes to love some people God knows it. He understands it. But it's also a sacrifice for him to love you and your mess. But he does it anyway. So we've got to be Christ-like, minded like Christ. Yes, sold out like Christ. And these sacrifices when offered to the Lord with a heart full of gratitude and a heart full of thanksgiving, with the awareness of the greatness and the awesomeness of God, our Lord and Savior, who created the universe out of nothing, nothing, these things will become a sweet aroma to God's nostrils. Are you ready, church? Are you ready to serve, to please God? Are you ready to sacrifice everything to please God? What are you waiting for? Why are you holding back? Nothing seems to be working right now. No matter what you try, it's not working. So are you ready to serve to please God? You tried to handle it. You tried to fix it, but you haven't done it yet. But God is waiting on you to submit, to serve him in spirit and truth. And then he's going to open up the, the, the prison gates and he's going to bring that blessing to you. He's going to break those chains. He's going to break that yoke on your bank account. He's going to break that yoke on your family. He's going to break that yoke on your sickness. He's going to break that yoke in your family. He's going to break it. God is ready to show his salvation. Psalm 50, 23 says, God is ready to show his salvation to those who repent and turn to him. Aren't you tired, church? He's waiting with open arms. Come to me and I will give you rest. Sacrifice to me and for me and I will give you rest. 
All you got to do is say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, I'm going to serve you now. Lord, I'm going to feed the hungers. Lord, I'm going to treat my wife right, my husband right. Lord, I'm going to stop with my filthy mouth and my filthy thoughts. Whatever you're doing that's against God, if you can stop it now and say, God, help me get over this. God will help you. This is the word of God for the people of God. I hope it penetrates your heart. We had to own our identity, our identity last week, and this week he wants us to sacrifice in a way that pleases him so that he can bless us and pull us out of that bondage that we're in. He'll even pull this nation out of her bondage if we will just sacrifice with praise and worship to God. So if you've heard this message, and God has penetrated your heart and you'd like to give your life to Christ or you'd like to return to Christ or you'd like to repent from your sins. Just repeat this word, this prayer after me. Lord, I repent of my sins. I know I'm a sinner, so I repent today. I ask you to forgive me. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Lead me. Guide me, feed me, and direct my path. Amen. If you pray this prayer, welcome to the body of Christ. And now, as I always say, we need to get into a Bible teaching church that teaches from Genesis to Revelation, not adding to the word of God and not taking away from the word of God. We are a virtual church. We open up our arms to any of you that would like to come and worship with us. We worship every Sunday here with a preached word. After this message, we go on Zoom to Bible study, communication and conversation about life and the Bible. We'll be there this afternoon, this morning at 11 o'clock uh, California time and 1 o'clock Central time and 2 o'clock Eastern time. You can Zoom right in from our website or from the, the, the post in the chat box here and come on in and fellowship with us. Sister Rita from Ohio is teaching a wonder. We have members all over in different states and cities. She's teaching a wonderful lesson on Revelation. We have some deep conversation and relations. And so I invite you to come. You have to study God's word. Every Thursday we have prayer. You have to learn prayer and you have to gather with the saints so we can pray together and pray the hell out of the devil. Every Thursday at 3 o'clock PST Pacific Time, California Time. We're here 5 o'clock Central Time, 6 o'clock Eastern Time on Zoom. You can get that on our website, rhythmoflifechurch.org, or you can get it right here on the Facebook chat box. Whatever you need to do, God's got it. And then we have our prayer conference coming up next Saturday on August 24th. We invite all of you, go to the website and register. It is going to be dynamic. God is calling us to the table to feast on the prayer and the fast. He called us to, this, to his table this morning on sacrifice that pleases him. God wants to serve us meals that will help us grow and become more Christ-like, but we resist. I gotta go shopping, I gotta go get my hair done, I gotta go get my nails done. I can Give God the time, sacrifice the time, and he will. Redeem your time in Jesus' name. I want to thank you for those of you that have made donations to our program coming up. You help support us. I appreciate that. I can't do it by myself. Our team can't do it by ourselves, but together we can do a whole lot. And we're moving toward getting that program together for our youth where we can help them understand money management and finances so we don't raise a generation that doesn't know the importance and the value of money and how to use it, how to spend it, and how to invest it, and how to save it. And we can't do all that without you. So thank you for your tithe, your offering, and all that you do to support us. So having said all of that, I want to encourage you to come to Bible study. We're going up in just a few minutes here, and I will be there waiting for you along with the rest of the team as we study God's word together. Try it. You might like it, okay? <laughs> anyway, have a great day on purpose, knowing that God can and he will do whatever you need him to do if you will move out of his way and allow him to be God. So have a great day on purpose, just because you can. Bye-bye. I love you, Rhythm of Life.